Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson uh, in computer literacy class on the dangers of cyberbullying. Uh, this is an extremely important lesson because cyberbullying is something that affects your generation um, and all future generations and is something new. People my age did not have to worry about this, and so it's important that you understand what it is and what you can and should do about it if you are a victim. So the first thing we need to do is define what cyberbullying is. And as the pictures at the bottom would indicate, um, it has to do with people using electronic devices to uh, harass, intimidate, uh, coerce, or otherwise treat someone badly. Uh, and you can see all the things that are in the cross out down here um, are examples of what it could be. It is the willful and repeated harm, which includes harassing, humiliating, or threatening text or video or picture images that are inflicted through the internet, interactive technologies, or mobile phones. Now, that's a big, wordy, highly academic definition, but it basically means if someone is using uh, computer networks or cellular networks to treat you badly, that is cyberbullying. So how is cyberbullying different from regular bullying, the kind of bullying that unfortunately has existed in schools uh, for a long time? Uh, there are some differences and it's important for you to know what they are. Uh, the first one is you can be cyber bullied 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. You do not have to be physically at school to be cyber bullied. And so that makes it, in a lot of ways, even more, uh, here's a fancy word for you, insidious than regular bullying because it can stalk you no matter where you go. Also, cyber bullying can be shared with an extremely large audience whereas normal bullying would normally take place in the classroom or on the playground or in the hallways, uh, this can be shared with an extremely large audience. In fact, you could say a worldwide audience. Not that people around the world particularly care, but theoretically, it's worldwide. And it can be sent anonymously. You can basically not know who's bullying you. It can just basically be happening in the cloud and Therefore, that can be uh, extremely unnerving. So, what are the types of cyberbullying? Well, first of all, there's just standard gossip. Unfortunately, gossip is something that you deal with when you're your age, and gossip can occur in real time right in front of your face, or it can happen behind your back on the internet or over cell phone networks. So gossip is posting or sending cruel uh, information that damages a person's reputation and relationships with friends, family, and acquaintances. So um, as they would say in Spanish, don't be a chismoso. Exclusion. Um, when you are deliberately left out from something that other people are allowed into, that's called exclusion. Uh, and in this case, we're talking exclusion from um, like private groups online, not being friended by certain people, um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's impersonation. Someone can actually try and break into your email or your Facebook or your Instagram accounts um, and then send messages that cause embarrassment or damage to your reputation uh, and affect your relationship with other people. If someone were to break into your Facebook and all of a sudden start sending messages that weren't from you, and then all your friends are getting upset because they're like, why are you saying this kind of stuff to us? Um, that could be extremely unnerving um, and uncomfortable. There's also harassment, which is if someone repeatedly posts or sends things that are offensive, rude, and insulting. That means you are being harassed. Uh, none of these things are okay in any way, shape, or form. There's also cyber stalking, which means uh, if someone is posting or sending unwanted or intimidating messages, which may include threats, and they continuously do it, they do not stop. It is relentless. That is cyber stalking. Uh, 
There's also something called flaming, which is an online fight where disrespectful and offensive messages are posted on websites, um, forums, or blogs. So if a whole group of people starts um, basically trying to incite you all at once online, then that is known as flaming. And then, of course, there's outing and trickery, which means tricking someone into revealing secrets or embarrassing information about themselves, which is often shared online. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could say one thing to you, I would say do not, under any circumstance, allow anything about yourself, pictures, facts about you, whatever, to go online uh, that you do not want everybody in the world to know. Because once it's online, it is very, very, very hard to keep secrets. So if you send someone a text message, assume that everyone in the world is going to see that text message, especially if it's a picture. And then, of course, cyber threats. These are uh, remarks that are on the internet that threaten or imply violent behavior um, and sometimes displaying suicidal tendencies. So sometimes, uh, as a detention-seeking behavior, someone can make it seem like they're uh, about to commit suicide and kill themselves, uh, even if they don't intend to do it. That is a form of cyberbullying and coercion because that's a way of getting all your friends uh, to get worried and maybe try and do something about it. So there's a lot of different ways you can be cyberbullied. And obviously, this is a very long list. Um, and all of these matter. All of these are things you want to avoid. And all of these things are things that if you they're happening to you, you really should seek help. So what are the effects of this? How does this affect your life if it's happening to you? I probably don't need to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, it could make you not want to come to school. If you're experiencing this kind of thing, it could basically shut you down and basically make you go, you know what? not going to school today, don't want to deal with it. Um, that alone is a problem because you need to be in school. It could um, decrease your grades because even when you're in school, you could basically be in a defensive crouch just trying to survive the day rather than being present, engaging with what you're supposed to be learning and doing your best. You are in what we call survival mode. Um, that's not good. Uh, lower self-esteem. Your concept of yourself, unfortunately, at your age, is strongly influenced by your peers and friends. Um, and because of that, um, your concept of yourself and how you feel about yourself can go down. And it can also even lead to health problems, at which point um, your doctors would need to get involved. Um, all of these are a big deal, and if you feel like any of these things are happening to you as a result of cyberbullying, you really should do something about it. So if cyberbullying happens to you, here are the key things that should happen. First of all, please talk with someone you trust. Um, reach out to an adult that you trust. If you have trouble talking to your parents about it, seek out a school counselor, seek out a teacher with whom you have a trusting relationship, and, and please reach out. Do not keep it to yourself. Don't respond. Um, cyber bullies want to be acknowledged. They are seeking attention. They want you to react to them. So just like with a bully in the classroom, if you react to it, you're giving them exactly what they want. So don't react. And don't pass along hurtful postings or messages. Don't repost stuff that is designed to hurt other people then you become part of the problem. And that's not a good thing. Keep the evidence of cyberbullying. If something happens, save it and show it to an adult and make sure that something can be done and whoever does it is held to account. Save and print the screenshots, emails, and text messages because they can be used as evidence to use against the person that's doing it to you. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, um, if you're on Instagram, first of all, you are kids, so your accounts should be private and no one should be seeing your stuff unless you've specifically added them to your account. So you do have the ability to block the person who is cyberbullying you, and you should consider contacting the service provider or webmaster to file a complaint. So on Facebook or Instagram, uh, you can file a complaint with them about people who are doing that to you, and it's important that you do. Uh, again, you should report the incident to your school and let them know, hey, this is happening, can you do something about it? Um, 
we're going to do everything we can to help you resolve that and we will also keep a, an eye out to make sure that it's not happening in real time in the school environment. And then the most important thing is obviously ask for help. If someone is doing this to you, please ask for help. If you keep it to yourself, you're going to die slowly inside and you don't need to do that. You shouldn't have to feel like you're going to do that and so it's very important that you ask for help. So sometimes talking to a counselor or a professional is exactly what you need uh, and, and they know the dynamics of the situation and they're going to make sure your privacy is protected as much as possible but most of all they're going to step in and they're going to do what they can to make sure that it stops because nobody deserves to be cyber bullied. So hopefully this helps you understand this concept a little bit more um, and hopefully you don't experience this but unfortunately the truth of the matter is an overwhelming majority of students say that they have been bullied online in some way shape or form at some point during their school lives. So with that, we've reached the end of the cyberbullying lesson, and we will be having a quiz on this uh, later on. So this uh, online video serves to be a study guide for you uh, as you learn about um, cyberbullying. But with that, this is, once again, Mr. Blumendahl signing off from computer applications class here at Waldo Middle School. Thank you for listening.